Hello friends, welcome to my channel. It's Shailene here with another video and I just want to thank you for being here today. I am actually trying out something new today. I'm trying out some Windsor & Newton water soluble oil paints and these paints were actually gifted to me from Windsor Newton so shout out to them I was really excited to try these so in this water soluble oil kit uh, I think there's 10 colors that it came with in their cadmium red alizarin crimson lemon yellow cadmium yellow phthalo green cerulean blue French ultramarine yellow ochre burnt umber and titanium white um, it also came with some linseed oil and a couple of hog's hair brushes. With the stay at home order and quarantining and all that stuff, I have definitely felt inspired to create more and learn more and try new things instead of just sticking to watercolor. It's been a really inspiring time for me, honestly. Um, I've been obviously trying out oils and really dipping my toe into making video and editing video <laughs> and all of these things that I think I let fear stop me from trying for a really long time. And so, yeah, I just feel really inspired to learn new things and to grow and to expand. And so here's me trying something new. So this is actually my second time using these paints. Yesterday I painted with these for the first time. Um, and if you're familiar with my work, you know that I paint with watercolors. So when I first tried these, my approach was a bit more like it would be with watercolor, meaning I started light and then I painted the darker values as I went, which I know is backwards to how most oil painters work. They typically work dark to light. So today, round two, I decided to try that approach and paint all of my darkest values first. And though these paints, these oil paints are water soluble, they don't operate or feel like watercolors at all. It will definitely take me some time to become as comfortable with these as I am with watercolors. So I'll, at the end of this video, I'll show you the end result of yesterday's painting. It definitely didn't turn out bad, um, but I ended up covering a lot more paint layers um, to finally get the look I wanted than I had to with this painting. And I think that that's because I started light <laughs> and then gradually went darker. Uh, it just didn't work exactly the way I expected it to. So, you know, just learning as I go. Um, I would have showed you the video of the process I made yesterday, but sadly the video wasn't set on manual focus. So the quality isn't really, <laughs> it's not great. Uh, it was just focused on my hand the whole time. So, you know, I'm still learning how to work my Canon, so I'll get there. But this one turned out clear. This one's nice and crisp, so. <laughs> Um, so I'll show you the end result, like I said, of yesterday's painting at the end of this video, but you'll have to wait and see. Um, oils definitely are going to take me some practice, but I can imagine that with time I can become comfortable with them. It's just a different feel, and the more I have been using them, the more I can tell it's just going to take a different approach. This Windsor Newton set came with two brushes in the kit but I wasn't really able to use them. They felt kind of splayed at the ends and I'm just so used to the watercolor fine point that I get in my round brushes that I just had to pull out my watercolor brushes and use these. Um, it honestly felt like putting on an old pair of shoes once I switched over to my watercolor brushes. I was able to get a little bit more detail in there. And obviously this is a really small canvas, so smaller brushes really just made more sense. What's really cool about these paints is that if you don't have, you don't have to have turpentine or mineral spirits to thin these oils or to clean your brushes. You can just use soap and water when you're finished, which I love because, you know, painting with watercolor for years, it is so simple. So I love that. You know, being new to oils, I love to just keep it simple. So water is great. Obviously, I am not an oil painting teacher. This is not a tutorial necessarily. I just wanted to share my experience with these paints with you. 
but I have watched a few YouTube tutorials on water solubles and oils in general. So I know a little bit. Um, I know that there is a method that you want to follow to avoid your painting cracking when it dries. And that's to paint thinner layers first and gradually let your layers become thicker. I think it's called the thin over fat rule. I could be wrong about that. Um, but I tried to be mindful of that rule as I painted. I think it'll take a little while for me to get the hang of it because there was a lot of times where I wanted to use the water to really thin it as I was doing some of the last layers and I think that I wanted to do that because it felt like I would be able to get more fine detail if the paint was thinner. So yeah, if you have tips for me, please leave them in the comments. <laughs> I would honestly appreciate any constructive feedback criticism you have. Um, I definitely was probably painting this like a watercolor painter in a lot of ways still, but it's okay. I, I ended up getting a result I liked, so. One thing I realized as I was working is that white seems to be the color I needed the most. So I will definitely have to go pick up a bigger tube of white. One fear I definitely felt many times is that the color I was mixing was going to mix with whatever when I mixed on the palette I felt like when I would bring it to the canvas whatever paint was still on the canvas underneath where I was going to paint I felt like it was going to mix together and not be the color I wanted it to be and that did happen a few times but I feel like for the most part it was a lot easier than I expected to lay wet paint on top of wet paint without mixing them together and it might have to do with the application, the way you do it, but it was kind of something that once I was getting the hang of it, I felt like that wasn't too much of an issue. One thing that I think will definitely take me some work is learning how to use the right amount of paints on my palette. With watercolor, I love that I never seem to waste any paint. But with oils, I, I put more paint on my palette than I ended up actually needing. And so maybe something I can try in the future is just squeezing paint onto the palette as I need it instead of putting big globs on it. Because I definitely don't like to waste paint. Especially this good stuff, you know. Maybe that's just part of the process, I'm not really sure. But if you have any tips for saving oil paint and not wasting it I would love to hear I am keeping all of these paints in my stay wet palette which has a lid so that'll be awesome because I'll be able to keep those paints wet for a really long time I'll put a link to the palette I'm using as well as links to all my supplies down in the description so I've actually really wanted to learn oil painting for a long time. My grandma on my mom's side was an oil painter and she was so amazing. She painted a ton of New Mexico landscapes, which is where she's from, uh, which is where we're from, but she lived up in northern New Mexico so there was a lot of Spanish architecture, old churches, mountain landscapes, uh, the Taos Pueblo, um, some very beautiful work and as a kid I was always super fascinated by her work and I remember I would go into her paint studio and I would super lightly just touch her paintings to see if they were dry because I was always so stunned by how long oil paintings took to dry and I kind of felt like why would anybody want to use a medium that never dries <laughs> And maybe that's why I gravitated to towards watercolor. I mean, they dry pretty quickly. But I do see that there's a, there's a beauty to it. And it is amazing that with oils, you can keep working it day after day after day because it's not dry. One thing I remember as a kid, that she, uh, we would 
you know, we would be like, Grandma, can we paint with you? Can we use your oils? Can we use your paint brushes? And of course she's like, no. <laughs> but she was so clever. She was really smart. She would give us all of her old paint brushes and because she would just save them, I think probably for us grandkids, but she would save them and then she would fill a bucket with water and she would take us to the back patio and she'd be like, here, you paint on the concrete. So we'd use her nice brushes. We thought they were nice brushes, you know? And we'd use those paint brushes and we'd, you know, draw little pictures and write our names and we'd have competitions of who could draw the most before the sun evaporated our little works of art. And those are kind of my, honestly, those are my earliest memories of painting or using a paintbrush is out on grandma's patio. So look at me, here I am, finally allowed to use oils. <laughs> Maybe I always felt like they were too nice for me. I don't know. It's, it's a lot of fun. She actually, when she passed, she left me all of her oil supplies and I have not really used them. I've opened them a couple times and I didn't really even have any of the, you know, oil, uh, thinners or mediums that would go along with it. So I kind of have just let them sit for a long time. But I have some of her brushes and I need to pull those out and give them a try. So I hope you enjoyed my rambling story of grandma's painting and all that good stuff. But I am clearly getting into the home stretch of this painting. I really enjoyed these last details. I obviously used a lot of white, as you can see here, and I just wanted to make some of those little petals that are in the sun. I wanted to make them pop, and that was really satisfying. <laughs> I think that the working on the rose itself was my favorite part of this painting, and it was a lot of fun to try and mix these colors and learn how to get the shades I want to get. I'm a lot more comfortable with mixing watercolors to get the colors I want, so that, you know, that might take me a little bit of work to really learn how to mix colors with oils and get the colors and tones I like. Obviously, I don't use a lot of white with watercolor. You kind of let the white of the paper be the white that you use with watercolor. So it was a, an interesting new experience to use white paint like this and added some of those deep contrasts into the crevices of this rose. And there you go, finished product. And really quick, I wanted to show you the rose I painted yesterday. I'm pretty happy with how both of them turned out. I think that I prefer the leaves on the rose that I did today, but I think the face of the rose I painted yesterday turned out pretty beautiful. I love that there's some, some yellow tones in that one. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.